The next feature we're going to take a look at in 2.0 are Serato playlists. Now Serato playlists are a good way to upload and share your set list with other people around the world. Uh, to enable Serato playlists we need to go into the setup menu and on the plugins tab you're going to have an option here called Serato playlist. Uh, so let's check that box off if it wasn't already and let's click also click off enable live playlist which I'm going to get into in just a minute. Now the Serato playlists are basically an extension of the history panel and uh, when you you're going to want to select the date of your set and then the format. You're going to have a new format option called Serato Playlist. Uh, so, and then you're just going to click the export button. And that's will upload the set list to your Serato.com uh, user profile. Uh, so let me just go ahead and load up a few tracks. Uh, pretend I played a set and whatnot. So just to get a nice little track listing. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Left, right, left, right. Okay, so, uh, so we've uh, played a set, whatever. And so now we want to upload this to the Serato.com, uh, your user profile, under the playlist section. So what you need to do is click and highlight the date of the session, and then click on Export. Again, make sure Serato Playlist is selected as the format option. Click on Export, and you're going to get a little warning saying this is going to upload from uh, your history to your online Serato Playlist uh, user account, and it may affect performance while sending. So if you have a lower spec computer, you might want to take a little caution when doing this, but... Uh, I have a nice blazing fast MacBook Pro, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so let's click on yes, and it'll open your web browser. And this will take you straight to your Serato.com user profile uh, on this page right here. So this is going to be uh, your set list right here. So let's just click on continue. And so this is going to be your set right here, uh, what you just played. Uh, but you can also edit this and set the privacy settings if you want it just uh, private so only you and Serato can see it or you can make it public so everyone can see it and share it with uh, everyone. And you can edit, you know, all the information in it where you played at and whatnot and this will be the set list. And then save it. And so if we go back to your playlist uh, page, so here you go, this will be uh, my set list right here that I just played. So now you can share this with people. Uh, and so let them know what you're playing in the clubs, what's hot right now, and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. That is Serato Playlist. That is uploading a playlist after the fact. Now there's also, as I mentioned, the live option, uh, which we need to enable. Uh, and this basically pushes your track listing in real time as you play it to your Serato.com profile. So people can see what you're playing uh, at that specific time in real time as you're playing it at the club or whatnot. So... Uh, again, this is going to need an active uh, wireless connection or internet connection for this to work. So uh, you might want to take that in consideration. If you have a lower spec computer, it's usually uh, recommended that you don't have wireless and internet on. But uh, if you have a uh, fast and modern computer, it shouldn't be a problem. So if you want to enable live playlisting, you need to click on the Start Live Playlist button. And again, you get the same warning message. Uh, let's just click Yes. And this will open up a new um, playlist page in your Serato.com profile. Uh, yep, that's me. And since it's still technically in the same session, it will just continue with the older one. Uh, so uh, let me try and uh, minimize these so you can see both at the same time. Okay, so uh, let's just play some tracks and start uploading, uh, playing new tracks. And you will see it updates the track listing uh, in real time or pretty much real time, there's a slight delay um, when you're up playing the track, so just give it a minute, it should start kicking in, you should see the track start turning orange, there you go, uh, bam, so uh, this new track, it's pushing the uh, track listing in more or less real time, there's quite a, uh, about a 5 or 10 second delay, uh, but you get the basic idea, so uh, this is for, you know, when you're playing live at the club, and you, if you want to let people know uh, what you're playing uh, specifically at that time, in real time, see there you go, pops up another one uh, as you're playing. So this is the live Serato playlist functionality in Scratch Live 2.0. Again, this is just a good way to uh, let people know uh, what you're playing in the club or your set or uh, whatever. So this is the new uh, Serato playlist functionality in Scratch Live 2.0. <laughs>
uh, you know, thing people uh, encounter is, you know, they run a room on one drive and they want to transfer everything over to another drive, uh, usually an external drive. Uh, but it's it's not that it's hard per se to do it. It's just uh, rather tedious and a lot of people get confused on how to go about doing it. So uh, Serato have implemented a somewhat easier way to do it now in Scratch Lite 2.0 and that's with this advanced file, ma uh, file management feature. Now there's no option for this or anything. It's just basically uh, integrated into the files panel. So uh, let's say I have this crate right here and I have my songs in it. And I want to export this to my external drive because, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, I'm running out of room on my internal drive, so I want to move my stuff over to the external drive. Uh, all you have to do now is simply just click and highlight the crate and drag it to the folder or the hard drive where you want to move it to. And it's as easy as that. So just click, drag, and drop, and you'll get a little, uh, little pop-up box here saying, uh, giving you options. You can either copy. Uh, which only copies the file, so you'll still have the original files on your internal drive, and you'll have the files on the external drive as well. Or you can move the files, which is basically a cut, and that will uh, cut the files from the internal drive and put them on the external drive, so uh, the files won't be on your internal drive anymore. You also have the option to remove the original reference from the library. Uh, that basically updates the crate in Scratch Live with the new file location, uh, which will be on my external drive. If I don't click this option, then you're going to have doubles of the song in uh, the crate. You're going to have the one from the internal drive and the one from the external drive. And as you can see now, I have the location right here, Users, My Name, Music, uh, Techno, December 2009. So that's on my internal drive. Uh, so let's check the Remove Original References option and let us... Uh, well, I still want the songs on my internal drive. I don't want to move them. So, uh, so let's just copy for right now. And there you go. You'll see this little box up here. It'll start copying all the songs to my external drive. Now, uh, it's actually just a flash drive, but uh, so it's going to take a minute. Uh, so we'll just let this finish. And uh, basically, that's all there is to it. So this is good. Uh, easier way now to be able to move your files from uh, internal to external or external to internal or whatever. It's just an easier way to move files around uh, from drive to drive or even into the same drive. Another problem, I wouldn't say problem, but another question I get asked a lot is, uh, say you have a crate of files, but uh, the f files come from various different folders on your hard drive, and they're not all in one folder, but a lot of people, they want them all in one folder. And that wasn't exactly possible before uh, with Scratch Live. I'm, it, you know, uh, it, it's possible, but it was very tedious and hard to do, and I don't even want to try to explain how to do it because uh, it was rather confusing, but... Uh, but this is a good way to do this also if you want to move files uh, from that come from various different folders all into one folder now. All right, so as you can see now, uh, I got it's done copying now, and you can see the location now is updated now to my external drive. You see volumes external, uh, December 2009. So uh, this is the new advanced file management feature in Scratch Live 2.0. Again, this is just a, a nice and easier way to uh, move files in your crates from your internal drive to an external drive or uh, vice versa or whatever. So uh, this is the new file management feature in Scratch Live 2.0. And that is pretty much going to be it for the new features in Scratch Live 2.0. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Uh, these were just my introductory ones. I'm going to have a lot more coming out uh, detailing uh, specifically with a lot of the new features and uh, going into greater detail with them. Uh, particularly the effects. Uh, I have some new videos coming up um, uh, with some more tips and tricks in t uh, Scratch Live 2.0. And I'm going to be taking a look at the new MIDI controller I have, the Tractor X1. Uh, it's a great MIDI controller for controlling the effects in Scratch Live 2.0. Uh, but there you have it. These are my first look videos at Scratch Live 2.0. Hope you enjoyed and stay on the lookout for my new ones coming soon.